Hey everybody, welcome back to Amateur Hour. So, our favorite Canadian God King is at it again, this time with a magchucked rotary axis CNC plasma cutter. And it's a freaking cool idea. Uh, it's cool enough that I couldn't sleep last night thinking about it. So, I built a simulator to kind of support the prototyping. Towards the end of the video, he indicated he might need some help with some of the drive stuff and other things, and I figured if he gets help from me or anyone else for that matter, they aren't necessarily going to have the hardware on site to do the testing. So I built this simulator as kind of a prototyping support tool. And uh, as I'm about to show you, uh, right now it basically duplicates what his machine does physically right now. So the format of this video is that I'm going to quickly explain what we can add to this if necessary. Then I'm going to explain how to use the simulator to test algorithms if that's something that you want to try to help with. Then at the end of the video I'm going to give you kind of the dummies guide about how to get this to run on your machine if you're really new to Python. So if this turns out to be something that anyone wants to use then I can add a couple more features that I think would be helpful. For example, um, if we want to try to do control inputs more graphically, we can do stuff like mark a spot and then have the cutter cut out a circle around that. We can also do things like have it cut out rectangles based off of the two opposite corners, things like that. We can also add support here to have this thing talk to whatever kind of control software or hardware gets built, you know, if it's a phone app or something like that. Uh, we could also hardware in the loop simulation this, and when we have a control board, uh, have it control this piece of software as opposed to the physical axes on a machine. You know, it makes it easier to kind of work without having to fight around with a with a early prototype piece of hardware. So now, if you would like to use a simulator to try out some tool pathing algorithms or something like that, I'll explain first some some of the symbology. Uh, this gray dot in the middle represents the center axis of the machine. So this is this is the center of rotation and slide. This red dot here represents the current position of the cutting tool. This yellow line represents the path that the tool took. So if you want to try out your own algorithm, uh, you pull down the source code and there are three python.py files. Ignore all of them except for control.py. And you can see that I've flagged out this section of code right here. So the way the simulator works is this algorithm function is executed and it programs in the toolpath into the simulator and then the simulator renders it over here. So over here uh, is what I'm doing is I'm pushing in commands into the command list and then the simulator is executing them. So the primary function you're going to need to interact with the simulated toolpath is this put command. It's easier than it seems because these two variables right here represent the stepper motors. So this first parameter in the put command represents commands to the rotational stepper motor. If you put a positive value in there, the rotational stepper motor will take one step counterclockwise. If you put a negative number in there, then it steps one step clockwise. And if you put a zero there, then in that command, it doesn't rotate at all. The second parameter here is for the slide axis. If you put a positive value in there, then it takes one step away from the center of the machine. If you put a negative value, it takes one step towards the center of the machine. If you put a zero, it doesn't slide in either direction. So I'll quickly explain how this code turned into this toolpath. So all this does is execute this command 60 times. And as what I'm doing is I'm not rotating at all and I'm stepping away from the machine. So it took 60 steps from where the tool started away from the machine. Next, for 25 steps, I rotated it counterclockwise. See, I have a positive value there, so it's going to step counterclockwise. So then it stepped 25 spots counterclockwise. Next, I slid it back inboard another 60 times by passing a negative value to the slide and leaving the rotation in place. Then I rotated it. 25 more steps clockwise by passing in a negative value to the rotation parameter and it slid back to the starting position. So if you wanted to try out an algorithm here then you, you have free reign as long as whatever you do executes inside of this algorithm function. So I would say the circle center is at let's just say 5 5 
and then the radius is three inches. Then I would step down here and write out all my code to make the circle by calling in these put commands. Then you can run the simulation and you can see whether or not it actually succeeds in you know cutting a circle or doing whatever it is that you're wanting it to do. So this will let you kind of rapidly prototype out you know the algorithms necessary because there's going to be some kind of gotchas with this right the farther away from the center axis you are then the more that one step translates to in distance so you're going to have to be able to adjust the speed of the cutting tool based on how far away from the center axis it is there's a lot of a lot of weird problems to solve with this so finally down here i have some constants that may need changed uh, this basically determines how big everything is drawn. Right now I have it at 10 pixels is equivalent to 1 inch. I also don't know how much his stepper motors are moving things, so this slide distance per step in inches is currently set to 0.05 inches per step, so that's how far the cutting tool moves when I issue a slide command right here. We also have the rotational distance per step in degrees. Um, I'm assuming half step on a 1.8 degree motor, but that's a big assumption on my part. But so, however much that translates to, you would set right there. I also have moved the tool start distance in inches and the tool start angle in degrees down here, and that determines where this red dot starts in the simulation. For example, if I were to change this to 75 degrees and 4 inches, and then rerun the simulation and you can see that I've started up here farther away when I was over here so that gives you kind of your initial reference point so I may make a pass at some of this next week uh, to see if I can get something like a circle cutting out uh, but you know others should really feel free to beat me to it now if you're interested in working on this but you haven't worked with Python before then I'll explain in somewhat excruciating detail how to get this program running. Alright, so to get started you're going to Google Python 3.4. We have to use version 3.4 because this library that I'm using to do the rendering uh, it has a bug in later versions of Python. So if you're a Python guy then you can use the virtual environment stuff to you know install this alongside your regular one but if you're if you don't have any other Python installed then just keep doing what I'm telling you and ignore what I just said. So when you Google Python 3.4, you'll hit this page, and then down at the bottom you'll see download, proceed to the download page, and I would just get the Windows MSI installer for 64 or 32-bit, depending on what machine you have. Once you have that installed, you'll need to open a command window. So I'm using Kanimu, but you can use the regular Windows command prompt for this. So first, let's make sure that we have Python installed so that we can see it. And we do. So having downloaded the source code, then you're going to want to change directory over to where the source files are, and you'll see this requirements.txt file. And we're going to run a command called pip install-r requirements. And that's going to install all of the supporting libraries that this tool is going to use. So once you have that in, then you're good to go. You can just type in python demo.py and it will execute the simulation for you. I've done my best to explain in that without having to completely uninstall all of my stuff, which is a big pain in the butt. So uh, if you have a problem with that, then just contact me in the comment section and I'll try to help you out.